He'll be all right, though, won't he? He's getting the best possible care. He's only 23. Yeah, I know. Do you think he'll be OK? Look, I'm not a doctor. But you've seen things like this before, haven't you? I've seen accidents. Yeah, but you saw... You saw what it did to him. I saw. But they can do amazing things, can't they? We'll just have to wait and see. It's all we can do. He'll be back at work next week. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Look, there'll be an investigation. I suppose so. You saw what happened? Yes. Come on, Brian. Sorry. Sorry, I was just thinking how ordinary it all was. What was? Everything. Until... Adrian! Adrian! Hang on. Hang on, mate. I'll get help. How on earth could it have happened? It shouldn't have. No, but it did. Have you had a look at that side outlet? Yes. So you saw what it was? But we checked the union. We replaced the seal and we pressure tested it. And you didn't think to check to see whether the hammer unions matched? It was a two-inch 602 female sub which blew a hole through that lad and you detached it to a two-inch 1502 male. We didn't fit it originally. I don't care who fitted the thing. You must have read the safety alerts. I know. Two-inch 602's a band. Didn't you notice it was a slack fit when you made it up? I let Adrian do it. You are joking. The 1502 wing nut made up tight. The pressure test was OK. And that two-inch 602 plug was hanging by a thread. It was like a cannon waiting to go off. I didn't fit it. And you didn't check it either. Hello. Right. Oh, no. Please, no. Brian, you got a minute? Yeah. <clears throat> Adrian, this is Brian, who's put together this world test equipment. Hi. Morning, Adrian. Now, do us a favour, Brian. Yeah. Let Adrian see what you do. He needs to understand how things are done properly. No problem, Ted. Now, come and find me when you're finished, Adrian. I will do. Cheers, Brian. Cheers. Right, well, this is a sand filter. It's a pretty standard piece of equipment. It filters sand, then, does it? Well, I can see you're a quick learner. It's been modified, but as you can tell, there's not a lot to go wrong. We don't have a schematic to hand, but it's the same layout as we've used twice before recently. Right, well, this is pretty much complete, apart from some servicing and pressure testing. What's left to do? Well, first we'll service this side outlet connection. Why? What's wrong with it? Nothing, probably. But as a rule, we replace seals and we always pressure test before we start operations. So, uh, you can do that. Break this connection and swap the seal for this one. Don't worry, I'll check it all. Right, all we need to do now is run it up to 5,000 PSI and make sure nothing leaks. My tip? Unlikely. We know it's OK, because we've put it together carefully. Obviously, anybody using this piece of kit needs to know it's capable of working safely under pressure. So, if you want to make your way over to the container and monitor the pressure, I'll start the pump. Right, lads, pre-job safety meeting. Ryan, do you want to kick things off? 
Yep. Uh, after the inspection, we made good all those things which we'd identified as potentially hazardous. You've got the list there. Yeah, and I'm happy with that. Nothing in the testing raised any concerns. No leaks? No. I've seen some dodgy kit in my time, but I know this sand filter's been well maintained, so that's good news to start with. I was slightly worried about several trip hazards and pipe runs, but Adrian's done some very good work with the barriers. Good. Adrian, you see why we take such trouble making sure we're running a safe operation here? I hadn't realised. OK, gents, we're about to open up the well. Any questions? I'm happy. Adrian, you OK? I'm clear. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rachel Hillier and I'm here to conduct the investigation into the death of Adrian Hudson. I'm stressed that this is not a trial. My responsibilities are not to apportion blame, but to ascertain the circumstances leading to the death of Adrian Hudson and make any recommendations which might help prevent any future such events. I would like to call Mr. David Healy. Mr. Healy, you are an independent safety consultant. That's correct. You have studied this incident and visited the site. Yes. Could you explain what caused the injuries to Mr. Hudson? He stood directly in front of a side outlet. As he closed the top valve, the female 2-inch 602 plug failed catastrophically and struck him in the lower abdomen. He was thrown 19 feet and landed against pipework. I'm not a medical expert, but I believe it was the impact of the female plug that caused the fatal injuries. Mr. Jameson, you were the site supervisor. That's right. And Adrian Hudson worked for you? He did certain days at college. But when he was on site, you were his supervisor? Yes. Before Mr. Hudson started work on the uh, sand filter? Yes. What safety checks did you make? After the operator had installed the equipment, it was thoroughly tested and then we made an inspection. What did that involve? Walking along the lines in the direction of flow from the well. We inspected the lines and the equipment to make sure it was correctly pressure rated and so on. And what came to light? Very little, really. I mean, I never imagined. That plug should have been checked. They said they checked it. When you carried out the inspection, did you refer to the schematics? Uh, no. Why not? The schematics weren't available. Who was responsible for providing them? Well, normally the person installing the equipment would have them. Was it their responsibility to provide them? I'm not sure. Normally they'd have them. OK. So, when you carried out the inspection, you weren't able to check the equipment against the schematics? No. Is it fair to say that the inspection was a pointless exercise without them? No, I don't think it was pointless. We took that inspection seriously. I take safety seriously. This is the 602 plug which struck Mr Hudson. It failed at approximately 3,500 PSI. Are you able to say why it failed? Yes, absolutely. The 602 and 1502 should never be connected. In most cases, they're impossible to connect, but in this case, they were. Unfortunately, in two-inch diameter 1502 and 602 unions, the thread pitch is the same and the threads engage. So are you saying that someone connecting the two-inch 602 and the two-inch 1502 would not know there was a problem? I can best demonstrate using this plastic model. This is a two-inch 1502 male union. This is a 2 inch 1502 female union. As you can see, the fit is very snug. Now, if I try to connect the 2 inch 602, it does engage, but loosely, until it bites. 
the threads of these unions are the same but a different diameter. The easiest way to differentiate between them is to use a go-no-go -go ring. On the 602... Can you explain why it is so dangerous to connect these two different unions? The pressure rating is very significantly reduced. Under pressure, it's likely to fail catastrophically. We have been told that the side outlet hammer union had been fitted with an incorrect female sub. Yes. A two-inch 602? Yes. Did you know that these fittings are actually banned in Shell? I did know that, but I didn't know it was a 602. It wasn't obvious. But in the process of installing a piece of equipment, isn't it your responsibility to check that all the parts are correct? Yes. But it shouldn't have been shipped to me like that. Is it reasonable when commissioning a new rig up to check every single item? In my opinion, yes. Shell has a process called walking the lines prior to pressure testing, which basically entails checking every single item in the line. Would a visual inspection have prevented this incident? It depends on the skill of the person carrying out the inspection. Would you have recognised that the wrong pressure-rated plug had been installed? If for some reason I couldn't identify a part number, I'd ask for the connection to be taken apart and checked. That's what we use the go-no-go -go rings for. In your view, Mr Healy, how many of these 602 fittings are still in use worldwide? That's impossible to know. But these hammer unions have been in use for at least 50 years. There may be many still in circulation or mounted on vessels. So in theory, an accident like this could happen again? I'd go further than that. Without the most extreme diligence, I'd say it could easily happen again. The injured person, while operating a sand filter valve in a temporary well test setup, sustained a severe multiple injuries caused by the impact from a female hammer union. Inadvertently dislodged from a side outlet as well testing was in progress. He was thrown 19 feet from the sand filter equipment. He was medevaced to a regional clinic where he underwent emergency surgery. He later died in the clinic. Rig up of temporary well test facilities was completed and tested. Pre-job safety meeting was held with all parties concerned prior to start of operations subject discussed was generic. EQ Ibjured Personment was pressure tested to 4,500 PSI, hazard and operability analysis, HAZOP, was conducted on all rigged up well test EQ UIBured Personment. Hazard and operability, HAZOP, identified absence of permanent safe access to sand filter valves, close out of action items in hazard and operability analysis report conducted, temporary ladder was provided, connection was a mismatch between the male and female hammer union, 602 female to 1502 male. Pressure gauge had been removed from the needle, sand filter equipment presentment used previously, well test contractor serviced the side outlet connection prior to UTOROG U32 well test job. Broke connection, replaced seal and made the 602 female back to the 1502 male. MPI test was done on the side outlet prior to this well test. Pressure tested unit to 5000 PSI, configuration of equipment presentment was not according to manufacturer's design layout. However, well test contractor stated that the configuration at the two previous tests were as in UTOROG U32, manufacturer's configuration included a permanent access adder and a working platform for operating. The middle valves and different orientation of the valves, the configuration and operating manual were not available to well test contractor at the time they took over the EQUIB Eured personment. Original design had a flanged outlet and not a hammer union. Valve orientation may have been changed for convenience to access the valves during servicing of EQUIB Eured personment in the yard. Change of valve orientation aligned the discharge valves with the side outlet hazard and operability analysis. Hazard and operability analysis, HAZOP, did not identify the hazard with valve. Orientation and configuration, injured person was wearing PPE, safety helmet, boots, glass and gloves, injured person had six years experience in well test operations, injured person stood on. Discharge valve wheel, about three feet above the ground to operate the middle valve, 8.6 feet high, isolating the lower chamber.
also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone.